Hello everyone and welcome! How's it going? Vasco here from the Angular University. Welcome to the Angular Security Masterclass. This course is a Web Security Fundamentals course, where the sample application that we will be using during the course is an Angular and Node application. But the concepts that you will learn during the course are not specific to this stack. They are applicable to any technology stack that you use in your concrete project. All the front-end code in this course will be in the latest version of Angular, and the back-end will be in Node, specifically all the back-end code will be in TypeScript. During the course we are going to be using several open source packages from Off0. So using these packages let's see how we are going to tackle learning this advanced topic. So as you know security is maybe the number one advanced topic in web development. Here is what we're going to do. We're going to take an application that is already working and that it's in a fully unsecured state. So there is no security added to it. There is no user management. We are going to secure that application and we are going to submit that same application to a series of web security attacks. Then we are going to put in place the necessary defenses against those same attacks. So this means that we will be learning web security via a series of practical examples of what an attack looks like and how should we defend against it? So we will be continuously switching our black hat and our white hat during this course. Let's start at the beginning. We will have the application running using HTTPS and we will see that that does not ensure by itself that the application is secure. We will start by adding user management to the application. We are going to start by implementing the user signup functionality. From scratch, we will be using a Node.js server, a REST API. We will be storing the passwords in a database. We will learn best practices for storing passwords. We will learn about hashing and salting and other cryptographic concepts. Those concepts are usually considered very advanced, but please don't feel intimidated by these concepts. We are going to approach them in a very practical way. We are going to focus not so much on the internals of how those mechanisms work, but how are they useful to implement security? When should we use each cryptographic tool and why? During the implementation of the signup functionality, we will introduce the first category of web security attacks that we will learn to defend against. It will be offline dictionary attacks. So we will learn how to store passwords in a way that defends us against those type of attacks. After that, we will move to the login functionality. So again, everything implemented from scratch. We are going to start by implementing a traditional login system where there is a stateful service in the server and there is a temporary identity token that we will be storing in a cookie. So that will be our first implementation. Then we are going to refactor that and we are going to move to a stateless solution. So no state is kept on the server and we will be using a JSON web token. So we will introduce JSON web tokens and we will see what are the several advantages of using them and how they can be used to implement authentication in our application. JSON web tokens are the main technology used behind many security related solutions on the internet such as for example Firebase authentication, it uses uh, JSON web tokens and also Off0 itself is based on them. So at this point we will have a working solution based on them that is storing the JSON web tokens on local storage. We are going to see that that makes the identity token vulnerable to a certain type of attacks. We are going to perform a cross-site scripting attack on this application we're going to see why the attack happened, what kind of defenses were not in place at the level of Angular itself to allow the attack to happen. We're going to see how to steal a temporary identity token and send it to an attack server. Just as an example, we're going to see how that can be used to impersonate any user, even if we don't have the password with us. After that, what we're going to do is we're going to defend our uh, JWT based implementation. We're going to defend against that attack by using cookies again as a storage mechanism. So 
cookies and JSON web tokens, they are not alternative technologies. We are going to learn in this course how to combine them. So we are going to see how these two technologies can be combined to create a better solution for our identity token. We're going to see then that that implementation just made us vulnerable to a cross-site request forgery attack or CSRF. We're going to learn how to defend against that attack as well. So at that time, we will have a fairly solid solution for user management. We are then going to focus again on the original cross-site scripting vulnerability of our application that allowed the attack to be performed on the first place. We are going to fix that. And then we might be surprised that still with all these protections, there is a problem with the design of our application that still makes it vulnerable for attack. So we are going to learn at this point some common design pitfalls that introduce security breaches in our systems and how many times the best uh, defense against security attacks is software design. We have implemented this user management solution from scratch, from first principles, but in uh, many situations, what we want to do is to use a third party solution, such as, for example, Off0. So we will be making a demonstration of Off0 in this course at this point. And we will also talk about how security is typically implemented in enterprise scenarios by talking about pre-authentication. We will then move to another major security topic, authorization. We are going to start on the client side. We are going to learn how to implement certain UI features that are only available for users with a certain role. So we will write custom directives that will allow us to add or remove, for example, certain buttons, certain menu entries, depending on the role of the active user. We are then going to introduce the Angular router in the context of client-side authorization and we are going to see how the router or any client-side functionality in general cannot really ensure true security. For implementing that, we need to switch to the server side and always implement authorization at the level of the server. We will be implementing this using Express middleware. We are going to implement the server side functionality of allowing someone to log in as another user. So this is usually an administrator only functionality where an administrator can log in on behalf of any user, for example, for investigating an issue report. At this point, we will have an application with a high level of security and we would have covered the fundamentals of authentication and authorization. Plus, we are familiar with a series of very common attacks and how to defend against them. So let's then learn together web security fundamentals in a fun and practical way. Join me in this course and let's get started defending our application. I want to thank you for watching and I will see you inside the course.